In this lesson, I'll show you how to solve systems of linear equations with two variables by elimination. I have three examples prepared. In the first example, we have integer coefficients. In the second example, we have decimal numbers as the coefficients for the variables. And for the last example, we have fractional coefficients. Let's begin with question number one. It asks, solve for x and y. Now before we can apply the elimination technique, that is before we can even start, we need to do a quick check for three things. And I have the checklist right here and you should always do this before starting the method. So we're looking for equations that are in standard form. You need to make sure that both of your equations are in standard form. And that means that the variables are exclusively on one side and the constant is on the other. And notice that we have xy and xy on the left side for both of these and the constants on the right side. So the first point is checked. Are the variables aligned? And for this, we're looking for x's and y's in the same order. So if you look at the first equation, we have x first and y second, and the same applies for the other equation. So that too is checked. And finally, are any of the coefficients the same or similar in both equations? By similar, I mean that the coefficients are the same number except their opposite signs. So let's go ahead and analyze. The coefficient of this x is 1, and the coefficient of that x is 2. They're not the same, nor are they similar. Here we have a 4, and over here we have a 5. Again, they're not the same. And so, because we can't check that, we can't undergo the elimination method just yet. We actually have to modify one or both of the equations so that the coefficients of one of the variables is the same as the other. For example, the coefficient of this x is 1. The coefficient of that x is 2. We can actually multiply the entire first equation by 2 so that that becomes a 2 and it matches that coefficient. Let me go ahead and show you. I'll multiply equation number one, the first equation, by two, and we end up with a modified equation being 2x plus 8y is equal to 36. And I'll rewrite the second equation because we haven't modified it. So the equation that we just generated is actually proportional to the equation that we started with. It's the same thing. Now that the coefficients of x are the same, we can actually check that last point and start the elimination method. So the idea is that we want to eliminate x in this particular case because the coefficients are the same. And we can do that by subtracting the two equations. Let me show you what happens. So if I subtract 2x with 2x, I end up with 0. 2x minus 2x is 0. 8y take away 5y, we end up with 3y. And 36 minus 24 is 12. What we have in orange is a simple equation which we can solve. Now we have y is equal to 12 divided by 3 and we get 4. So the value for y will satisfy both of these equations, although we still need to find the value for x. And to do that, you substitute what you find, in our case y is equal to 4, into any of the former equations that we started with. And for reference, it's always nice to label your equation. So I'll call this equation 1, equation 2, and the modified version, equation 3. Remember, you can substitute this y into any one of these three. I'll go ahead and substitute it into 1 because it seems to be the simplest to work with. However, whichever one you choose, you will end up with the same answer. So that is equation number 1, and I'm about to substitute this 4 into there. I have x plus 4 times 4 is equal to 18. 4 times 4 is 16, which I'll transfer over. 18 minus 16, and therefore we get an x value equal to 2. And you always want to conclude with a therefore statement. So therefore, y is equal to 4, and x is equal to 2. And again, those two numbers satisfy both equations simultaneously. Let's move on to question number two. In question number two, we're asked to solve for p and q, and we have these two equations with p and q as their unknowns. 
We'll begin with our checklist. Remember, we cannot proceed on to elimination unless these three things are checked. First question is, are the equations in standard form? And they are in standard form. Notice that both P and Q in both of the equations are exclusively on the left side, and on the right side we have our constants. So I'll place a check there. Next question, are the variables aligned? And unfortunately, they're not aligned here. Notice that P starts first, and then Q is in position two in the first equation, but that's not the case for the second equation. So you can switch either one. I'll switch, I'll call this equation one and that equation two. I'll switch the order for equation two. And we end up with the following. So I'll rewrite the first one, as you can see. And the bottom one becomes 0.7p plus 1.2q is equal to negative 4.4. So now they're in the right order, and we can go ahead and check that. And finally, are any of the coefficients the same or similar in both equations? And by a visual check, clearly that's not the case. So when that happens, you can actually decide which variable to eliminate, p or q. If we forecast that we want to eliminate p, then we have to make the coefficients of p the same. So I'm going to multiply the top equation by 0 0.7 and the bottom equation by 1.5. This is a clever way to make the coefficients the same in the two equations. So if we multiply each of these terms by 0 0.7, I'll show you a few and then I'll just update the two equations. 1.5 times 0 0.7 gives 1.05p and 0 0.7 times 0 0.8 gives 0 0.56q. 1.2 times 0 0.7 gives us 0 0.84 and you get the idea. So now you have to do the same thing for the 1.5 for those three coefficients. If you do that correctly, you should end up with the following modified equation. And by all means, now that I've updated the two equations, I'll call this equation three and equation four, you can verify these numbers on your calculator. Okay, now we have to decide whether to add or subtract the equations that will lead us to the elimination of P. It is clear that subtraction is the correct option. And it's not always subtraction, just because it was in question one and in question two, you'll see in question three that adding the two equations will lead to the outcome we're looking for, the elimination of the variable. So if we subtract in this case, we get 0p. 0 0.56 take away 1.8 gives negative 1.24q. And 0 0.84 take away negative 6.6 gives 7.44. And if we divide both sides by this factor to isolate for Q, we'll end up with what Q is. So 7.44 divided by negative 1.24, and we end up with negative 6. Now we must take negative 6 and substitute it into any of our former equations. We have four options to choose from. Any one of them will lead to the answer for P. Let's choose equation number one as a default. So sub into equation one. Remember it was 1.5p plus 0.8q is equal to 1.2. Substituting into q, and then solving 0.8 times negative 6 is negative 4.8. We will bring that over, and that gives us a value of 6. Dividing both sides by 1.5 gives us an output of 4. And therefore, Q is negative 6 and P is positive 4. I almost forgot to check that point. Question three asks us to solve for R and S, and here we have fractional coefficients. 
before we can even start the checklist process, we want to make sure that these fractions disappear because it's hard to work with fractions in some cases and it's best that they are converted into integers. So we can convert these fractions into integers if we can find the lowest common denominator and multiply the entire equation by it. Between 6 and 8, the lowest common denominator is 24. And between 3 and 4, it is 12. So I'll multiply 24 by each of these terms in the top equation and 12 for the bottom equation. And this should give us two new equations that are not fraction based. So 24 times 5 divided by 6 makes 20R. 24, and I'll show you this on your calculator if you like, 24 times 3 divided by 8 is 9s. And 24 times negative 1 is negative 24. We'll do the same thing for the bottom. 12 times 2 over 3 makes 8r. 12 times negative 3 over 4, again I'll show you on your calculator, 12 times negative 3 over 4 is negative 9s. And 12 times negative 5 is negative 60. So now that we're not dealing with fractions anymore, let's take a look at our checklist. Are the equations in standard form? Yes, they are. Are the variables aligned? Yeah, r and s are in the same positions. And finally, are any of the coefficients the same or similar in both equations? As you can see, the coefficients of s are similar. They both have a 9, of course, with different symbols, but that's fine. That means we can proceed on to elimination. And so at this point, we have to decide whether to add or subtract. Will adding lead to the elimination of s, or will subtracting lead to the elimination of s? If you chose addition, you are right. And I'll show you why. 20 plus 8 is 28r. 9 plus negative 9 actually makes s 0. And negative 24 plus negative 60 is negative 84. Now, if we divide both sides by 28, we get r is equal to negative 3. We found r, and now we can go ahead and find s. And I would highly recommend not to substitute r into 1 and 2, equations 1 and 2, because they are fraction-based, and that usually trips up some students. So use either equations 3 or 4. Let's substitute into equation 4 sub into equation 4 and we have 8 times negative 3 minus 9 times s is equal to negative 60. 8 times negative 3 is negative 24 which when we bring over should give us positive 24 and negative 9 s is still on the left side. This becomes negative 36 and dividing both sides by negative 9 gives positive 4. Two negatives when divided give positive output. And therefore, our answers are negative 3 for R and positive 4 for S. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll gladly help you out. Talk to you all later.